Good morning, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining me again. I'm sure the title brought you here. Uh, my great great grandma was a Grand Cherokee princess. I'll put that up there because in lieu of Columbus Day, um, and uh, we just had a powwow this past weekend in Raleigh, and uh, I spoke to a couple people out there, and uh, it just really reminded me that us as Native Americans, we have to start educating people on like what they sound like when they ask us these crazy unicorn questions and say that their grandma was a Cherokee princess. And, uh, you know, we're about to we're about to talk about some of that today. So uh, thanks for coming back. Like, subscribe, share. Uh, I know this is something that's kind of needed. Uh, us as Native Americans, you know, we have the right, we have the sovereign right to say who is and who is not part of our nation, you know. And uh, this video isn't really to point fingers, but it's more of we're going to have some of the con I I'm going to tell, I'm going to share some of the conversations that I've had with people when it comes to me being Native American and them asking uh, very close-minded questions and uh, what I do to, you know, not combat it in the moment, but just to educate people in the moment, respectively. Um, so we had the uh, Raleigh Dix, the Dorothea Dix powwow. Yeah, we had the Dix powwow Saturday. Uh, it was great. I had fun. A lot of good songs and good dancing out there. Um, Olivia, Trey Roberts, uh, Sand and Ryan. You guys did a great job hosting that powwow for real. Uh, really enjoyed myself. <laughs> and uh, it was open to the public. That powwow was open to the public. And uh, I got asked a lot of very good questions and I, I spoke to a lot of people uh natives and non-natives alike and um we're gonna get to a conversation that happened but before that let me rewind to about five months ago so i can tell people let me set the story you know this is something that happens to native americans all the time in america and uh we got to do something about it. So this is, this is a crazy story. So I was working one day uh, outside of a church here in Durham, North Carolina. And a uh, young man walked up to me. And uh, he looked like he was either in class or some kind of school. Um, but he was probably mid-20s or so. And uh, at this point in time, I had feathers hanging in my rearview mirror of my work van, which uh, I have since then taken down because I got tired of people saying things like this to me, to be honest with you. But anyways, so uh, the guy seen my feathers. We were in the parking lot and uh, he stopped me. He said, hey man, you know, are you Indian? I said, yeah, yeah. He said, okay, cool, man. What tribe are you from? So I'm Kahari on my dad's side, walking my Suwon on my mom's side. Oh wow, like both sides. He said, uh, when did you find out you were Indian? And I said, uh, I was speechless, you know what I'm saying? I I thought about it and I was like, I just always have known. I'm I'm not sure what you mean, you know. And uh, the guy was a black dude, you know, so I assumed that he was black, probably. So uh, I said, man, you know, has anybody asked you ever, like, when did you find out you were black? And uh, he was like, nah, you know, that was a stupid question. And I was like, yeah, but you just asked me the same thing. And he, he didn't get offended anything and uh, the conversation kept going he said well uh your tribe that you're in you know do they accept like biracial people 
and once again, I was like speechless because, of course, all of our tribes have people that are of mixed blood and stuff in them. So I was like, yeah, you know, what What exactly do you mean? It's like, yeah, we got plenty of biracial people, I guess you could say, in our tribes. He was like, oh, so like they would let someone like me join? And I was like, bro, you have such this narrow-minded view right now. I don't know where you're getting your information from. And I said, bro, that's not how it works at all. Okay. Most tribal systems have an enrollment system. You have to have either a parent or a grandparent that was enrolled to then get enrolled. Uh, but moreover, that's not what makes you Indian. Okay. It's more of you have a community and a family that claims you and they should have always identified as Native American, you know, so you don't have to be enrolled, you know, that's the least that people are worried about. What it is, is where do you come from? You know, who claims you and are they claiming some kind of, uh, tribe, you know, and I had to tell them, you know, it's not even about blood or anything. Um, it's more of, it really goes back to, does a community claim you? Are you involved? You know, has your family always been involved? Um, and he was completely amazed. Like, uh, he was like, man, you know, I'm sorry I asked you these questions like that. And, uh, you know, I, we had carried on conversation and uh, I mentioned to him, I said, yeah, you know, it's kind of weird that no one does that to any other race except for uh, Native people. You know, you don't go up to any white people and say, hey, um, can you put me on your life insurance? Because I'm pretty sure my great great grandma was a European princess. <laughs> You know, so I don't know, you know, think it's just really, it's a weird concept and we have got to start letting people know that this narrative that's being pushed, that's just be, you know, a lot of people think just because they have a Native American last name in their genealogy tree, that that means they're Indian, you know, and I mean, it, it gets even down it gets as far as you can have people in your lineage that have native blood, but if they gave up the identity to be called native, that is their fault that then runs down on their descendants, which could be anyone. And um, it's hard to reclaim an identity like that, you know? Because there's a huge myth going around that, you know, a lot of people are Native American and you need to do your genealogy because you can get some stuff. Like, dude, I've heard it all, you guys. I've asked, I've had people ask me how much money I get a month for being Indian. You know, not going to lie, some people do. But... That's not the case for everyone. You know, if that's the question that you ask and right off bat, I don't even really want to talk to you. So we have got to set the record straight. Uh, we got to start telling people. That's why I started this channel, to be honest with you, because that's a Native American issue that I'm tired of dealing with. We could all share this video and set the record straight because I'm not I'm not with it. You know, uh, there's plenty of records where people have claimed Native American Indian over the years, and that was their choice to do that, no matter how dangerous or safe it was in the past. And if your ancestors gave up the right or made the choice to stop calling themselves that, that's their fault that runs down on you, you know? And like I said, that's the same with uh, enrollment and even community. 
which I'm not going to say if people haven't left the community and came back and got involved and are still part of their tribe. Okay, because that is totally possible. But guys, we got to stop letting people just think, oh, I got Jacobs in my family tree from six generations ago. You know, I'm Indian. Do you feel me? And uh, not going to say like we can't let these people learn, man, but dude, if I have a great grandma that's black, does that mean I can go and do gangster rap and say the N word? You feel me? I've never identified as black my whole life. But if I found out right now I had a great grandparent that was black. Would that be okay if I just totally appropriated the culture? What would I have something said to me? You feel me? And I'm sure I would. Why isn't it the same way with Native Americans? From that, we'll go on to what happened at uh, the Dick's powwow here in Raleigh. So me and my boys had just sang a song and, uh, we're standing up behind a drum, you know, watching people. And a guy that I had met last year, a young man by the name of Eddie, um, good dude. He's very talkative. He knows that, Eddie, if you see this, shout out to you. Um, I enjoyed talking to you. But I didn't tell him I was going to share this story, but I am, you know, because this is important. So, Eddie remembered me from last year's powwow and I remembered him so we were speaking and um you know he what people do is when they get into the conversation of being Native American they want to they want to drift the conversation they want to open it up towards where they could possibly say Man, I might be Native American too. You feel me? And uh, I could feel that that's what he was doing. And he said, you know, Corey, man, you think people with my uh, skin complexion can be Indian? I said, Eddie, yeah, man. You know, I said, it goes back and forth. You know, there's, there's a whole array of colors of Native American people. You know, it's not about color or anything. He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said, uh, I, well, I think I might be Indian because my dad used to tell me my great grandma was a Cherokee. She had long black hair and uh, brown skin, high cheekbones. I said, Eddie, let me stop you right there. Okay. I said, I just want to, I said, no disrespect. I just want to stop you right there. And I said, uh, if I walked up to you right now, and said, hey, Eddie, my dad told me my great-great-grandma was a black lady. I can say the N-word, right? I said, how does that sound? And he said, he looked at me, dead in my eyes, and he said, that sounds very close-minded. And I said, doesn't it? And um, I think he got, I think he got it. You know, and I and I didn't just leave it there. You know, I just didn't kill the man's heart. I said, Eddie, when people tell you stuff like that, before you go around and say things like that, because there's people that have lived and died by their Native American identity. OK. Um, you need to really do research and know what you're talking about before you say things like that to, to, to anybody of any race, you know, not just Native Americans. But um, the fact of the matter is none of us Native Americans talk about this stuff. You know, nobody has no videos up. Nobody's doing anything to let people know the sovereignty of our identities, 
okay? And uh, we got to start doing that, guys, because um, I'm tired of letting people believe this myth that their great-great-grandma was a Cherokee princess. If that's the case, all of our fifth great-grandmothers are the same woman. And that's not true. Okay. I just need people to share this. I need y'all to get it out. Because uh, I love my culture. And I love my people. And I think we're doing a huge disservice to ourselves. By letting people believe myths of just because I have this last name. I might be Indian. I can get something for being Indian. How much money could I get? I can go to school free. Dude, you know, we have got to stop it because it's really an attack on our sovereignty at the end of the day. If you guys really want to get political with it because being Native American is turning into a political position Instead of a people at this time. We're no longer... Native American has never been a race, actually. It's been a people. It's like Hebrew. Jewish. They're a people. It's not a race. Because um, Native Americans come in all different sizes, colors, backgrounds. But there's always a root from where they came from. And we've got to get back to teaching people that. If people would do the research, uh, you would find online there's a lot of articles, uh, a couple of small books, good readings about how everyone says their great-grandmother was a Cherokee princess. Um, but it's really microaggressive. Uh, people need to stop saying that unless they're actually educated. And even if you do have... Indian blood in your ancestry, it doesn't make you Indian. Um, facts, big facts. Clip that up. Um, do not say, oh, I might be blah, say, blah, Blackfoot, chop tall, crazy crow, running bull, I, you know, whatever. Don't say you might be something unless you actually know. Um, cause it's just, you know, stop trying to relate. It, you know, it's really racist. It's like when a white person goes up to a black person and says, Hey man, I got black friends back home. You feel me? So for everyone that doesn't want to say it and hurt people's feelings themselves, here's a video for you. Share it, send it to your friend. Um, the truth is the truth. You feel me? So, I love you guys. Um, enjoy your week. Uh, be on the lookout for later on this week. We're going to hop back on that stock market. The prices that I'll drop Friday, y'all just need to pay attention. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I love you guys. Enjoy your week. Um, be blessed. Peace.